In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your front caliper. Let's get started. Let's remove the wheel, take off this cap if you have one, use a pry bar or a screwdriver, just be gentle not to damage it or the wheel. Set it aside and then use your 22 millimeter socket and remove all eight of your lug nuts. Remove the wheel. Now from the back side of the caliper, you can see the banjo bolt right here. Use a 14 millimeter to break this free. I don't wanna remove it yet, but I do wanna break it free because it'll be easier to do this now as opposed to when the caliper is off and then snug it up so you don't lose a lot of fluid. We'll wipe off this strippage here. There we go. We'll leave that like that. And then you can use a 21 millimeter socket to remove the two bolts that hold the caliper and bracket onto the knuckle. Basically what I'm doing is I'm taking off the whole bracket with the caliper as an assembly. It'll be a lot easier to manage that way. Okay, this one's off. Leave it in a few threads so that it holds the whole bracket and caliper while I take this one off. Now be careful because these are heavy. Take off the top bolt. Finish removing the bottom. Take this off, set it up right on top. Take the new bracket, put a very light layer of grease right here where the pads will ride with the anti-rattle clips. Don't put too much because you don't want it to get onto the rotor, but just enough to prevent rust from building up over time. Do the same over here. Now I already have a new rotor, so I don't have to worry about this, but if you don't have a new rotor, you might want to consider removing it. Since it's loose now, rust could have fallen back there. I know mine is good. Let's bolt up the bracket and then we'll uh, take care of the pads after this is nice and tight. Put the two bolts in, let's snug them up, torque them to 166 foot-pounds. From the old caliper, I'm trying to take the pads out. So typically you'd want to remove the bracket from the cal or the caliper from the bracket and then get the pads out. But because I have new anti-rattle clips, it's okay if I damage these to get the pads out. There we go. So I'm just using a pry bar. Pop these out of here. All right, here are the new anti-rattle clips. When you slide them on, make sure you slide them on, not like this. See how there's a curved area there? Make sure that does not go on the little pin. Make sure the flat area goes on the pin. If you have it backwards, they won't line up properly. This is how you want them because these tabs have a curve to them and the longer arm needs to sit towards the outside of the bracket. Having said that, put these on. You have to kind of find their spot here and they're not gonna slide in all the way because these anti-rattle clips also serve the purpose of springs that push the pads off of the rotor when you're not using them. Do the same to the outer one. And now before the caliper goes on, let's pop the slider pins out. And I know this is a new caliper, but they don't always come with enough grease. So if you have to use a pry bar or screwdriver, be gentle not to rip the boot. And as you can see, this thing is pretty dried up. It has a tiny bit of grease at the end of it, but not enough. So what I like to do is take some brake grease, put it into the boot. That's gonna act as a reserve of grease, work it in there, and then coat the slider pin as well. Coating the slider pin will ensure that grease goes all the way to the end and in the boot is, like I said, just a reserve of grease as this wears out. And another important thing is to have it right on the end of the boot here or in this ridge of the slider pin. That way the boot can seal up nicely, slide this in all the way, and then I actually like to pull the boot back off on the other side, on the bracket side, and put grease on that ridge in there. That seals up the boot on the other end also. It's important to do this, otherwise you get rust build up in there or water, and then that creates rust, and that is not great. Wipe off any excess grease that you might have applied, and then do the same to the other slider. Now grab your caliper, slide it right over the pads, just like so. And now let's put these two bolts in, put these two in, and on the uh, new caliper, they're 16 millimeter. Snug them up, and then torque them to 56 foot-pounds. 
All right, now let's transfer the banjo bolt. The new bolt is still a 14 millimeter. I'm gonna get my hardware ready, take off these two washers. The copper washers will basically sandwich the hose in between the caliper and the bolt. So save them, leave one on the bolt, take one off, put it aside safely, because we'll need to put it on the hose as soon as it's ready to be installed. Now bring your old caliper down, make sure not to hang it by the brake hose, and loosen up the old banjo bolt. Remove it completely. Break the hose free. Let this drain into your collection bucket. There's gonna be quite a bit of fluid in there. If you see a copper washer stuck to the hose like this, take some pliers, pinch it, that'll take it off. There's another one on here. There we go. Can't have any of these on there. When you put the new ones on, it'll double gasket and it will not seal up. I'm just gonna wipe off this mating surface here where the new gaskets will go, the new washers. That way I know it's sealed up properly. Take the new bolt with a new washer, slide it through, and then on the other side, put another copper washer and slide it right into the caliper. Make sure it goes on the other side of the uh, bleeder screw. Go ahead and bottom this out. Then we'll make it nice and snug. I'm holding my rag here just to minimize the spillage that is happening. Okay, that's bottomed out. Now I'm gonna give it about a third of a turn, maybe half. Yeah, I'd say about half a turn should be good. Basically what you're doing is you're crushing these copper washers together or up against the hose and the bolt and the caliper. And that's what's gonna create your seal. If they are not crushed tightly, but obviously don't over tighten it, it will not seal, it will leak as you step on the brake pedal. Now let's clean up the mess because you don't wanna confuse any residual fluid from the hose transfer for a brake fluid leak. Now because this line is very close to the bleeder screw, I'm actually going to back off the bolt, spin the line backwards, and then snug it back up. That gives me a little bit more clearance on this line here or on the uh, bleeder screw if I for some reason need to get a socket on there. While it's new, you can easily get to it with a wrench, but as they get old and rusty, well, you're probably gonna need a socket. Having said that, remove this little boot. Be gentle if you have to use pliers. Mine is very slippery, so it won't come off. Take a 10 millimeter wrench, open this up, and we'll let fluid fall down into our collection bucket. This is called a gravity bleed. What this does is it will pull, gravity will pull the fluid down through this line into the brake caliper, fill everything up, push the air out of the bleeder screw. And once we have no air bubbles coming out of here and it's just clean brake fluid, we can cap this off and then go do a manual brake bleed, which I won't show. But what that consists of is with this capped off and the master cylinder full, make sure you have someone stepping on the brake pedal, pumping it up, creating pressure, and after a few pumps, have them hold pressure on the pedal. You can open up this bleeder screw. As fluid comes out, make sure there are no air bubbles. If there are, repeat that process. If there aren't, cap it off and then you should be good to go after you clean up your mess. Once you have a steady trickle of fluid coming out of here, go ahead and tighten this up, make it nice and snug, and then cap it off. All right, let's get the wheel back on. Put on all eight of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and then we'll torque these in a cross pattern to 165 foot-pounds. And don't forget about this cap. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.